Fahrrad. You got hype too? I do. All right. So some of you may not be familiar with what a top bar hive actually is. This is a, they call this the Kenyan style top bar hive. It's actually invented by uh, American engineers that went over to Kenya to try to help them with a uh, more honey production and, and make it simple for, for folks in Kenya to build these colonies. Turns out that it's absolutely not simple for folks in Kenya to build this kind of colony. And um, <clears throat> I've been there a few times beekeeping and what they prefer in Kenya is log hives. So they cut them down from trees, hollow them out, and the bees go in them, and that's how they keep bees. There's a few of these in, in Kenya, but not very many. But in the United States, <clears throat> we do carry on this tradition of, of a horizontal hive in this V shape, and the bees do a beautiful job of drawing comb in there um, <clears throat> sometimes. Sometimes they do little tricks with the comb that we can't recover from, and they did in here. Uh, so I want to show you what you can tell from a drop board. So there's a little yellow jacket trying to get out of here, trying to get attention. So just to explain, this drop board is collecting everything that comes out of the colony. Everything that drops from the comb is landing on this drop board. All right, so that's how you can read it. So let me show you what's in there. Take a look at that. Bill, how long has the drop board been in there? It's been in there for, it's been like since last week, okay. since Saturday. So it's been in there for set, so seven days. This is the activity that's occurring in this. And I can tell, tell there's distinct areas of activity, right? There's this act area here where there's just this kind of light colored wax, right, cappings, right? So <clears throat> that's usually indicative of bees opening up stores and dropping that wax when they eat out the top cell of a capped wax cell. The detritus from that is this beautiful bright yellow and it drops right on the board. So from about here to here, what are they doing? They're opening up honey and the cappings are falling right over here. Right. Now there's something else going on over here. There was some brood in here. Right. So those are brood cappings, that darker brown. See it? All right. So it's, it's a very distinct way that you can tell exactly what's going on inside the colony. Right. They're also doing something right here. Right. What's over here? No, that's a treatment. Yeah. But forget about that for a minute. Right, there's more of this same color capping. So there was brood there that's emerging, right? So we've got brood emerging here. There was some brood emerging back here because Paul and I put it back there. And that's why it was emerging from there. But normally it would all be in this section. Now what's all these little yellow dots that didn't make it into cells, right? So that's a really good lesson uh, for you to learn. Not all pollen that's brought in the colony. That's why bees have to collect. Yeah, you don't want to stand right in front, right? So you want to be out oh, way. So let the bees come back home. See, look behind them. See how they, it's sort of like a, like yeah, an yeah, it's like an airport, yeah. So just move out of the way so they can come back in the cone. All right, so, um, so bees bring back pollen on their corbicula, this beautiful yellow stuff right here, right? That's probably from goldenrod, right? It's sort of sour, has a little sweetness to it. Um, but those, all the effort that the bees took to collect that pollen and it never got in a cell because it's tricky. They have to come and bees that collect pollen have to come in a colony. They have to go to where they're packing pollen and they have to kick it off of their hind legs into a cell. That's a sort of like tricky process. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And they let most of it, the majority of it gets into cells, but you can see evidence that it normally, uh, or there's some parts when it doesn't get into cells. All right, so now we do have some uh, formic, acid, formic pro in here which is um, a varroicide, and you can kind of get the, an indication of what kind of infestation you have if you were to look at that board and count the varroa, but I'm going to tell you, I'll save you some time. There's very little varroa in this colony, right? 
So. You'd be able to see the mice. On top on of the floor, oh, yeah. bro? Anywhere, all over. All they over. would just be dying yeah, and, uh-huh. yeah. So is there, are there some mites here? Yes. So you're saying it's ineffective or is that you just... No, it's just saying that there's just not a lot of varroa in the colony. How so. long have those crabs been on? They've been on since last Saturday. So we're violating, we're violating the, uh, here's a varroa. All right, so there's a varroa. Who wants to see a little varroa, Mike? On the corner? Yeah, right on the corner. Are the crows 11 days or is it two weeks? I thought it was two weeks. It's 14 days, yeah. So you're violating what? Because you didn't have, you're treating even though you didn't have a lot of mites? No, you shouldn't open it. Oh, you shouldn't open it? Before 14 days. Oh, okay. But I will sacrifice this for you folks. Thank you, you're so kind. We're going to see more Varroa, so if you, so I just want you to, so it's just that little tip on the Can end, right? Can Sure. Yeah. You got another hive tool? I don't. Okay, so why don't we smoke this? So look, these guys, this time of year, these guys are wintering up just like, uh, just like honeybees are, right? Yellow jackets. They're just a little bit more defensive than a honeybee, but they're, you know, yeah. <laughs> Fell off? Yeah. Okay. All right. As long as it's not near a colony. <laughs> right? Everything that was written and known about uh, beekeeping 100 years ago is still relevant today. We've just forgotten it. And the idea of how to read a bottom board was a general practice, and it happened all over. In apiaries all over the world, you know, beekeepers learned this piece, and they were able to gauge the condition of their colony, what their colony was doing, before they even opened it. Is this a queen right colony? I would say likely yes, right? Because there's brood coming out, you know, there's, there's brood emerging. I, you can't guarantee that. Or at but least it, it was brood, it, it was clean right. When? Two weeks ago. When, when, yeah, when, yeah. So let's just pull one frame out of here and take a look at what, um, oh, you got the smoker? So if I don't currently have a bottom board, it's a good idea to put one in? Yes, you just have a screen in yours? Yeah, I can have a screen bottom. Yeah, if you want to know what's going on inside the colony, it's always good to have a removable bottom board. But, but you're going to use it in winter time anyway, aren't you? Pardon me? You're going to use it in winter time anyway. Smoke the entrance a little bit. Of, uh, plywood? Like a sheet of plywood? The bottom board. Yeah. True. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. That's all this but is. You said you just get the assigns from the Who's somebody? Who's like somebody? That? Hold on. <laughs> somebody said something? Yeah, somebody, somebody told a, my, my neighbor. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, you, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So this is the sort of mixture. So if you're really curious about this, you can figure out where the brood is. All right. So that's another advantage of a top bar hive. If you put your hand here, you're going to feel the heat. Oh. Right. It's way different than the temperature down. Oh. Good joke. I don't like them either. Neither well, who said I didn't like them? Well, other people do. Okay, guys, not in front. You got to go over to the side because the bees are going to try to get, they're trying to come back into this colony and they can't, none of them are coming back because we're blocking them. See, turn around and take a look. See? So give them a chance to get back in. If you wanted to come up here and feel this, you'd feel the heat, you'd know that's where the brood is. See it? Feel it? Now go over here where the honey is, you're not going to see it. Right? See the difference? So you can actually tell, right? Yeah, of course you can. And put your hand on the yellow jacket. See how nice they are? They're not that bad. If he keeps killing them, they give off alarm pheromone like everything else. So that one says QC. Was that where like quality control? Quality control, queen, I mean, queen colony, I mean. So I suffer from the same, uh, I suffer from this uh, delusion that my memory is as good as it always was. I see. <laughs> and I knew what that was at some point. No, that, okay. that stands for queen cell. Oh, okay, so there's a queen cell. Oh, I love it. There was one there but at some point, in the his- <laughs> some point in the history of the colony. There was a queen. There was queen cell. That one, yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Paul, why is well? Um, you don't have to in any way. These numbers aren't quite right. Okay, so. So bees will um, make a comb like that. So yeah, let's get a better looking one. Mm-hmm. Give me some smoke, Paul. Sure. Right All right, here. put your veil on you if you don't have a veil. All right, so here's the kind of comb that they make. 
All right, so they so actually in this particular comb they've packed it with pollen, so they, you know they're they're still working on stuff at the back of this colony, right? So, but that's the way they shape the comb. All right, and if you're lucky, they follow the guidelines of the box, <laughs> <laughs> which they didn't last week. No, <clears throat> so what what this colony had tendency to do was draw comb this way, across all of these bars. So Paul and I had a. Uh, um, Paul and I had to uh, do some surgery on this colony last week and to get it to where we could look at it this way. So we got a lot of subjects to cover. We got a lot of people here, so let's not spend a lot of time on a top bar hive. But if you want, so that's the only lifting you do, by the way, with a top bar hive. That's it, right? There's no, I mean, it's seven pounds, eight pounds at max, right? So you're not picking up 50 pound supers or 70 pound supers or 100 pound supers, right? And so, so it appeals to some people because it, um, especially people with back problems and things like that, it appeals to them because, uh, first of all, it's a beautiful way to keep bees. And second is it, um, it makes it so that you can actually uh, work it and so no not have to lift it. No foundation? <clears throat> no foundation at all. They built this. So when you take the honey every year, the bees have to start from ground zero with new foundation? Assuming you're going to take honey. Assuming, yes, assuming you're going to take honey, which I haven't ever done, but... Now, the honey is on this frame, right? So that's how they make honey. Is there honey on that side? Yes, just like that. Honey and nectar. Oh, that's nectar. All right. So that so they so they're that's still on a flow. That's probably goldenrod, All right? So that's capped honey on that side, All right? So, so that's it. Bill, is there a reason for the shape of that as opposed to like a standard horizontal hive, which you just see more rectangular? Yeah. Um, Okay, you're gonna. So that's what you want to do, huh? Yeah, All right. Know, huh? You see, they're after my hands. Yeah. That's not a good deal, right? So now you know the bees are not wanting us around. So let's just close this up, really quick. Not one have stung me yet, but they could be. I mean, I mean, they could be showing a little solidarity for somebody who's smashing. Uh, This county made about, I don't know, so how, how, let's put that top back on. Okay, let's move away. Go back to the shape. Uh, <clears throat> so this county made about, um, I'd say made about 50 pounds of honey that I harvested out of it. Look at, turn around and look at all of those bees over the top there. Yeah. Right? All trying to say where, you know, like you guys are re all over here and it's not a good idea because we want to get back here and they want to be there right? all right so the takeaway from there is you can read a bottom board and you could tell a lot of things that are going on inside of a colony beekeeping doesn't have to be a big mystery it's not actually it's and as i tried to say i don't think i finished that sentence earlier that everything that we we learned about beekeeping we learned about 100 years ago and um even about diseases like nosema and everything, that's, we've known thoroughly what nosema and all those other diseases do. The only challenge we have today is varroa mites. All right, so <clears throat> once I put treatments in these colonies, I put a drop board in all of them underneath. Let me show you. So these bottom boards are specially modified so that they have a little slot right here. See it? And you can slide one of these trays in and then you can get an idea of what kind of activity is going on in this colony. Basically, you won't see the same drop profile that you saw on the top of our hive because these are vertical, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So, but you're seeing the same thing, right? Basically, there's some cappings that they're wax cappings on this side. There's some brood emerging over here, same thing. The pellets that didn't make it into cells are here. And then the purpose of this is to figure out how much varroa is in that colony. So who wants to Oh, see this little booger right here? That's what the, that's what you, that's why this test can go uh, awry on you because they like to eat varroa. Uh, yeah, so if it, it's an ant. So they will, you know, they take a bow. All right, so if somebody wants to volunteer to count the varroa on that sheet. So back to the reason of the, the top of hive shape? The shape? I, thought, I, just, I, just because? I don't know. Okay. No, no, it was, it, it, I can't remember why the shape, no one's ever asked that. 
I don't really remember why yeah, the shape was like that. I'm trying to think of what the benefit is. <laughs> well, they, they didn't want it. They didn't, they had, they didn't want to use uh, um, a, uh, <clears throat> it takes, it takes more wood to make it yeah. a horizontal hive. Yeah. And then they weren't going to make, you can make a horizontal hive very easily. Those are, you, Eastern European hives are all horizontal right. like that. And they use standard Huffman frames. Right. So you can make one that's, or just put a couple of bee boxes together. You know, and you could have a nice horizontal hive, do the same thing. All right, but yeah, I've actually you know. built my own there was two, probably two some therapy. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. There was probably some therapy around, uh, ther theory around why they were gonna yeah. build it with that V shape, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't recall. I probably read it somewhere. You can. How many you got? How many do you have? Find any? I, I counted five in this one corner. In this corner okay. Over here. One, one, two. What? 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 Oh, oh. no. No, that's no. no. That's not. But that. Two. We had one over here. We we squished them. It was that one. All right. So you found a few mites. Do you think? So they they've been. There's been a. There's been formic acid on this formic pro, right? That's the drop art under formic pro after a after a week of treatment, and that's a, a 36 hour drop. So we have like a spattering of mites. You don't have a big red sheet. And would you consider this colony? You can't really uh, <clears throat> depend, <clears throat> depend on a drop to be a really accurate diagnostic. We'd have to get in there and do a, a alcohol wash. But what I'm, what I, the reason I put this drop board under a colony that I'm treating is so I get an indication of how, if is my treatment being um, effective or not, right? So in this case, uh, Either the colony doesn't have a lot of mites, which I'm going to guess is the case, or it, um, or the Formic Pro is not working, which I doubt. Could they have mites that are just like still under the, under the Well, that kill, it, yes, but mm -hmm. Formic Pro kills them. Okay. Excuse me, did you use two pads on this one or one? Or uh, one? Yeah, I used two pads on this one in a really strange configuration. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not going to even show. Did you put them on top or in between the brood boxes? Well, I put them in between the brood boxes in this case because they were, that's where the brood was. All right, so we'll, we'll I, I don't have a normal configuration of Formic Pro so that I could show you, but. What is normal? What is normal? normal is that you lay it across, you lay it across <laughs> the. <laughs> yeah, I did something else. Yeah, I tried to make a time release out of it. And um, uh, I've read some research about how to do that. And then I did a little experiment with it. It's not illegal. It's not illegal to, to do it that way um, because you're not violating uh, the, the pest. You're just putting the pesticide in there. You know, you can install your a caricide or pesticide any way you want, except, you know, um, it won't be effective according to the manufacturers. But Did in, the the, get ripped? in this case, no, in this case, well, why don't we sh I'll show you what he did. Here, smoke this colony. Somebody please, is there a smoker lit? So when I push that back in, I could smell the goldenrod, right? So, so we're already on goldenrod. Now let's open it up. All right, what does this have? Well, that's a little bit. So these are these are these are earwigs. No, they're not bad. No, they keep, they, they clean they clean up other bugs. You like to get them aggravated so that they sting me. I mean, what? Why would you? Well, I just flick them off and they just. Leave. Oh, you do. All right, smoke a little bit over here. So. No, no, this is, um, this is B Smart's idea of, a, of an insulated Top? inner cover. Okay. All right, so they, he, the owner of this company um, went through uh, excruciating pain to design this thing so that it is both convenient to store some equipment in. This is where you, this is where you would store your um, robber screen. It fits right in there. He makes that, of B course. Smart. <laughs> and then um, there's other little, these are, these little slots are where you would store your entrance reducers if you were going to use just those. So he's got a, like a nice little design here. Plus he's got a nice uh, foam piece. And this foam is protected from the bees chewing it out and eating it because the bottom of this is plastic. So let's open it up. Do you use it all year round? Yeah, you use this all year round if you want to. Now this is really stuck Doesn't down. Make it hotter in there for him? Hotter? It's, it's already 95 degrees. Think about how your house works, the house walls, insulation, keeps the cool wind, and you got 
we don't we don't take out the insulation in the summertime. No, right. Right. Yeah. And they can they can thermoregulate. That's good. Noisy. So over there, there's uh, somebody wants to volunteer and run and get the little aluminum bench that we have over there that people have put their clothes on and stuff. Uh, right there, somebody's got their water bottle on that. No, the bees don't have an opinion. The bees will make a um, they'll make a colony on a cement wall. Right, you can take that and put it somewhere nice. Uh, yeah, don't lean it against that fence, though. No way, right? Because you'll just we'll just lose all of the tension on that. All right. So like we're gonna take this box off. So we need people that are strong. I got the bivalent. Last night in my left arm, my right arm, I have a pulled bicep. So here we go. Now the key to opening up a box is when you get to this point. You have a hive tool that doesn't really work well for this, but you don't start wiggling here. Right? If you do, you're going to damage that corner, right? You got to get all the way in before you start doing that. And we don't really have a hive tool that'll do that. Maybe that's in far enough right there. Right? Now this is going to Now if the if this was stuck with propolis, guess what this is going to be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So <laughs> now you put it up on that. That's what I got that for. But not not flat. You got to put it up on its end. Wood wood against that. Yeah, wood against there. Yeah. And you don't put it flat because you don't want to squish any of the bees. <laughs> it's still gassing out. All right. So what I put the Formic Pro in there with the foil on it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty strong. It's irritating a little bit. And so what happens is it, I, I left all the packaging. <laughs> on there and it's sort of like an extended release wow. now because now the formic is not going to just outgas all at once right it's going to it has these barriers around it so we're in the we're in the um, test mode on this and yeah i'm going to leave that in there for for a long time i will i will leave that i will leave that on more than probably 14 days yeah, so typically there's two, there's two um, full-length formic acid pads in there. So you would put them in the same position, but there would only be one here and one there. I, I left them. We're going to close this up. There's a lot of fumes coming off of there, and the bees are being denied their, 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 treatment. their treatment. Hey, Bill, on the bee talk the other night, I hear you say that you'll leave the, the switch in for longer than 14 days. You can leave the strips in for as long as you want. You can take them out next spring. Do you have to take them out at all? Nope. Hmm. Will they eventually just, just, just like evaporate? Nope. Them? You'll be there in the, in the spring. Is it going to be effective? They won't be outgassing anything. I put that inner cover back on. And, and now that. I dispose of those for course, we just throw them away. Did that one? You can toss them in the garbage. Or you can compost them. Compost them, yeah. Uh -huh. like, Watch out, you got bees over here. Can I really decompost in this? Yeah, you can. Form a cat. Formic acid is pretty natural. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to believe it smells that bad. Though. Well, oxalic acid's in that yeah. that concentration. oxalic acid's in your uh, right. rhubarb. Yeah. Formic is in, formic's already in the environment. In con higher concentrations, it kills. Okay. All right, so we'll put that brick back on top. Okay, thank you. So you see that 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 formic acid was working, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But there's no bees dying. I mean, there's no varroa dying, so we, we might have a good colony. Once, once that gas is out a little bit more, I'll get in there and, and do a roll. We have one over here we're going to do a varroa roll on right now, right next. And because it doesn't have any treatment in it, but we put two formic acid pads in there the traditional way. And then we didn't do a drop on it, so we're going to go take a look and see how... If, and it's been a while now, so it's been about three or four weeks. So now we're going to get in there and we're going to do a drop and see if we did anything to control the varroa in that colony. All right, we did not kill the queen. All right, so the queen survived mm -hmm. that during all that hot weather. All right, so she survived. So let's move this over. We're going to now do a roll. So we need our alcohol stuff. Uh, Bill, Bill, do you always use formic acid or do you no, switch it up? I switch it up. 
Yeah, so every I, other time? Or? No, what, no, what I do is I do uh, oxalic acid when you can use it. Yeah. And that's when the colony is broodless. And then I'll use Formic Pro when the colony isn't, has brood. Right? So those are two different formulas. For some reason, the Formic Acid molecule can penetrate the cap, but the oxalic acid molecule can't. It's, must, it's bigger. My guess is it's bigger. Um, yeah, yeah, get, get the alcohol and all of that, Bill. Oh, he got it. Somebody's got it. All right. So, so to do a, a roll, I'm going to go right from the beginning with this. I, I put that cover on the same. This has uh, B-Smart's insulated inner cover. I'm going to show you mine. It's a lot less sophisticated. <laughs> what do you think about the CO2 uh, version versus the alcohol one? CO2? Yeah, it actually puts them to sleep. Sort of. Yeah, I know, but you got it. We're trying to release the mites off no, the bees. But the mites drop. Yeah, well, they might. No, they do. Yeah, well, so, okay, but, but this is the only treatment that I know will work dependent. For everybody here to work with CO2 is a little bit difficult. But if you want to, that's fine. But if I was you, I, what I'd do is I would do a CO2 drop, then I would follow it with an alcohol wash and see if you got all the mites off. You get about an 80% yield versus the alcohol, so if you just kind of do a factor, you don't have to put bees down. Okay. Well, you can just treat prophylactically, too. You don't have to bother with any of this <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so sometime or another, I, I put some alcohol in it. This is 70% alcohol. You can use 90 uh, which is much better, 91. But, so we're going to demonstrate an alcohol wash here. What's that? I don't have one because <laughs> I actually support that. But I would say that I would say that you have to do it in a special way. So remind me to visit that topic after we do this. All right, because we want to talk about that a little bit. Smoke the front entrance. We'll we'll get these bees. We'll get these bees out of here. What? Why the space around there? Oh, that's a queen excluder. Oh, so we ran these okay. colonies all. Did somebody? Oh, we ran these colonies all year as a one single brood box colony. So, th so that's really, that's an inner cover. Yeah, yeah, it's this insulated inner cover. So, all the brood was contained in this box. Queen excluder functioned, and all of the stores are up here in this deep. All right. So that's how we run. That's how you run a single. You only really need one single deep for the queen to lay and she can't possibly outlay that by the time she gets to laying all the frame space she has in here the first cohort of her eggs have are have emerged so right so she can go that, I'm sorry, would you recommend that as a, a really good way to run your, your hives N no <laughs> it's just a way to do it you know what I mean so you want uh, you want to try to like figure this out for yourself okay, like if you want yeah, it works for eight, but you need more than two boxes. So the equivalent of two boxes, you'd have to have, I think, two mediums to do that, right? So, so you wouldn't be able to get that space. You got to do the calculation. So if you go and look at, go on the internet and find out how many cell spaces are on that, that frame, and you'll get the numbers. So there's about 3,000 on each, if you count both sides. And then if you get the egg laying rate, of the queen and just use like 1500 give be generous and that they only use 75 percent of that space you, that number you come up with will outstrip her ability to be able to lay so i mean it's a little bit complicated but that's going to take that excluder for the winter yes yes and why would i do that that's right that's right you can't keep you can't keep them from moving up in the winter time with an excluder because they'll leave the queen behind. That's the weight of the box. Okay. How much did that weigh? 45 pounds. All right, so there's 45 pounds of honey there. All right, so give these guys a little smoke. Thank you so much for all your help. And we're going to take this off right whoa that's what i don't like about this stand is it slips too much all right now those bees look pretty good to me yeah so we we forgot the mirror 
Yeah, go get and them there. And you can tell they're pretty heavy because they're just walking around on well, top of there. They're yeah, there's, and there's, look at how many there are, too. Yeah, you know. No, I just think they could be all flying around being all angry. Oh, yeah, no, they're, well, yeah. They, they angry, so, they, so, they, so, bees don't get angry. Yeah, they don't get angry. They don't have a, yeah, they don't have feelings. They don't have a full frontal cortex. They get defensive. Exactly. They get grumpy. So see, no, no action with my hand, yeah. none at all. Remember the top bar hive, right? Yeah. Give them a little smoke, let's see if they're... All right, so this is a, sort of a calm colony. All right, great, that's gonna be good. All right, so a typical roll for alcohol for an alcohol wash, or alcohol wash and not a roll, or however you wanna say it. We wanna to try to get the age-appropriate bees. So this is the tricky part for this. All right, you want to try to get bees that are the right age, and those are nurse bees, right? I think about everybody knows that at this point, that you have to have nurse bees to do this test. And you have to have exactly 300. And exactly... <laughs> and so that's, so that's one. Now, you can just put it there, and they'll, dry, they'll come in there. But, um, and the other thing is you don't want the who in there. All right, so she doesn't do well with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> no, either, either do I, by the way. Can you use this as your, instead of this, like if you fill this halfway full, would that kind of equal 300 bees Aha. versus using that? No, color? this is a scientific <laughs> study. Because this is what I've been using, but I don't fill it all the way. I just get a nice, yes. healthy Okay. Scoop. Oh, and you get a scoop with the top? Yeah. All right, yeah, that's the wrong way to do it. <laughs> all right, you got to... wrong. Yeah, so, yeah, half, we'll look at the difference. Half a cup this is half cup. Okay. Right? And then you even have to balance it off. Yeah. So you're doing a big drop. Yeah. But I don't fill that up all the way. I just, you know. Well, but here's what you do. Next time you do your, do your thing, right? <laughs> well, you're going to drop any alcohol, right? Right. Then spread them out and count them. Well, you'll have, then you'll yeah. get a gauge on how you can use that. Right. And get it to where it's 300 bees. Then put a little mark inside there. Yeah. Right? Very, so. very good. Thank you. Do you actually count the bees when you're done with the wash to see if you got 300 and then knock it out? There's scientists that do that every day. But do you? No. Okay. I go like this yeah. and level it off. You're going to see what I do. Okay. All right, so let's get a frame out of here. Now, somebody asked about uh, a, somebody asked about the plastic versus wood. I like to put a plastic frame in my colonies because, I like to put a plastic frame in the colony because it's easy to get out almost in, under any circumstances. A wood one will get propolized and it's more difficult to get out. So, but a plastic frame, you can always kind of lift. All right, they slide better. So I, if you put one on the end here, it gives you a chance to get that frame out. Watch, you'll see. Yeah. Well, yes, you do. But I'm just saying we're gonna we have to work into this frame where we get the one with brood. So we get we have to get some space. Now, if I had another hive tool like this, I need another hive tool like this with a hook on the end. Now, any any one either one of them. Here, give them this one so we don't mix them up. Okay. So where'd you use these? I use both of them. Here, use the silver one now. Okay, no, we, okay, yeah, we won't, mix, we won't mix them up. So where'd you use these? I, I've cleaned them before I brought them. With what? Alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Let's see here. The, the, <laughs> all the right answers. All the right answers. All right, so if you put it under here like this, right, you, which is the best way to do it. See his, see his bee? Look, look at that. A nice little pollen. Get out of there. All right, if you go like this, you're going to be pushing the frame away from the edge, and you're not likely to roll bees. All right, so you can lift them up like this. Then if you have a little move, well, I'm going to show them something. So you just move that over a little bit. That'll come back down on the rest, right? So it won't fall back in the colony. Then you can pull it up. Because normally you're alone, right, right Paul? That's right. I'm, right. I don't have anyone working in Yeah, right. So see, now we didn't roll any bees. We didn't kill any. So we're not putting alarm pheromone in the air. Way out here, what do we have? Nothing. So I would expect this time of year to see some nectar out here. But why isn't there any nectar out here? It's all up there. <laughs> it's all up. That's where they're storing everything, yeah, right true. up there. All right, so we're going to like, so if we, we could shake these bees, right? But we're not going to do that because we have a lot of bees in here. So let's just lay this thing right here. We'll do old school where we keep our comb. Now, you've got to make sure you lay your comb against an edge and only the edge, the top edge, right, touches whatever you're doing. You don't want any, anything to touch You don't want anything to touch the surface of the comb because you can break it and start robbing because you can get a stream of um, honey to come down. So this, this frame is tough to do it that way because it has that little... I had it, didn't I? You did. Right. Yeah, Paul, here, take care of that. Would you please... Um, I put your veil down? Thank you so much. I will, yeah. 
but there's somebody with a smoker, so I'll do that so you don't get stung. I'll keep my 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 head down. All right, don't kill any bees at this point. We, remember, we're looking for the brood nest. Try to get these bees out of our way a little bit. Now, the key to making a successful inspection, like or removal of frames like this, is to make sure that you, the frames you're not going to use, you always put the shoulders back together before you go on. So see, I'm going to I put them back together so that when I want to move these back into position, I can move them all as a whole lot. So you don't want to have them all over the place because it's hard to do. Okay. I'm trying to be conscious not to kill uh, bees, right? There's drone cells on this frame. So let's take a look at what we got here. Same thing, when you leverage over it like this, you're gonna kill, you can kill bees really easily. Where I am, I couldn't see. How did you know there's drone cells on there? Uh, well, you can't see them because so you, will, you will see them. Look, I know, but I thought from the outside, were you just looking down? Yeah, you just oh. look down, they're right on the top of the oh, frame. Okay. See them? So, look at that brood pattern. Wow. Come on. <laughs> that that is. <laughs> I wonder if there's a queen in here. I wonder if there's a queen there. Yeah, I mean, it could be queenless. Right? <laughs> there's a skeptic in the crowd, every one of them. Yeah, there's a little nectar in, inside those cells. Right? So, so there's an open patch where, they, where the colony... Um, where the brood emerged, see, in the center of that. She didn't come back there and lay yet. Oh, yes, yeah, she did. Yeah, all right, so this queen is saying, look, you know what? Any cell that's open right now, I'm going to lay back into. What are they making here? What kind of bees? Winter bees, exactly. This is not the one we want to sample because it's all capped. All right, so you're not going to get, you don't generally get nurse bees on capped cells, right? You're going to get heater bees and all this stuff. So you want to make sure that you're, you're sampling a frame that has open brood. So let's go see if we can find that, right? This is cap brood, correct? And there's only cap brood and eggs on us. Are they feeding eggs? Somebody said no. Absolutely right. They're not feeding eggs. Nobody feeds eggs. They don't feed them until their fourth day, right? Queen lays them, and then they don't become larva until about day four. And then, then they start to feed them. And they don't even feed them a lot at first. The second stage in stars when they feed the most. All right. I'm so I, I apologize for all of this sealed brood. <laughs> all this beautifully sealed brood. We okay. I know we should have said something about this. So. Right. This is an incredible uh, crop of winter bees that this colony will make. So is it all winter bees at this point? It will be because there's because brood rearing is just about over, right? So it's likely that those bees will come in and they won't have any brood to feed or very little brood to feed and they'll maintain their, their fat bodies will stay with them. Okay, what do we got here? Right, we're, getting in, we're getting into the queen's territory. And you know that because? Right, because she's on this frame. <laughs> I just saw her after I said that. There she is. Yeah, you see her there? That's what we want. We want a big Every cell in the middle of this is laid out with an egg. And Pat, you can see them? Yeah, you can see the eggs. Yeah, you won't be able to see them. She's that big bee in the middle there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you have a queen cell too. No, that's a, that's a button or queen structure. Now, there's nobody swarming in this colony. Sure. The big one right there. That's her. She's a good size. Oh, they move fast. Okay, this is a yard queen. We raised her right here. This colony swarmed, and they made uh, swarm cells. One of them, uh, yeah, she's the daughter of the of the queen that was in this colony in the beginning of the season. So she's a new queen, right? So she's do you a mark young. Your queens? Uh, I do, yeah. Sometimes uh, I do, but I'm yeah. So you just, you pick them up, they have handles. <laughs> Those little wings are handles, yeah. right? So you can pick them up and then you just put a dot on them. Yeah, there she is. She's going to about to crawl over the wood. Maybe not, right? So, but all of those, you can't see them because you have your um, appropriate, have your veils on, all of that empty space in the center, right? 
is awesome. all um, is all eggs. So she's laying another brood. So how would we know? How would we know that all the, if, I, if I can't see the eggs because I don't have my glasses on? You take a picture of this frame, no. right now. Yeah, you take a picture of this frame, mm -hmm. then walk over somewhere and enlarge the photograph and look inside so the back cells. Back in my own hive, how would I know? If That's I what I'm saying. Back in your own hive. Oh, okay. Take, take, take a picture, picture of this frame. Gotcha. Okay. And in, you want to take a picture of this frame, you can do it real easy. You just put the frame over here like this, right? And then you put your hive tool behind it. I'm not going to do it, though, because the queen's on this frame. You put your hive tail behind it mm -hmm. like this and lean it up, and your, and your frame will stay there nice and cool. Oh, wow. Teed up, right? Wow. Right Now you can go with your, without bumping the colony. You walk around the other side, take a photograph of that frame, and then just go over in the shadow if you can, or go over later on when you get home. And you can, uh, you'll can you be able to enlarge those cells and, and see the eggs. You can leave them on. Oh, you want, them if you want to get them, yeah if, yeah, yeah, if you want to get the bees off, just go like this before you take your picture. Just put your hand down. They don't like your hand, but they don't care about stinging it. They won't sting you. So I was thinking if you have a, if you right? have a little so, bit of... Right? So there you go. That's how you can do it. No, they're so calm because the genetics in this colony are high. Yours goes nuts on you. Yeah. Well, if you're killing them, if you're killing them, that's the reason. That's the reason why they're good. Yes. There's not a ton of propolis in this this colony. Yeah, these don't make as much propolis. Great observation. So that colony makes a lot more propolis than this one. So if you were gonna, if you wanted to trap some propolis, which colony would you put it on? Answer that question. <laughs> the one where they make a lot of propolis. I was gonna it's say genetic. That we make a lot, but then I saw yours over here. I was like, yeah, okay. It's, it's genetic, you know. So that's that's where it is. Yeah. What does that indicate when they do make a lot of propolis? Nothing. It's just that we. we and so what we've tried to do is we've tried to, in the United States. In this, these are just these are just uh, bee stock, right? These are not any. Don't think about these as Italian or Carniolan or Russian. These are just bee stock. Right, they're bees. And it's clear that they're not any of those things because that queen was born right here, right? And, and she made it out. So, um, but earlier on, we had a, a bee, a, a bee that we referred to, it came, it was called the Caucasian bee, came from the Caucasus Mountains. Made a ton of propolis, tried to breed that out of them. So, and then we were successful being able to breed them on. So beekeepers in years past have selected for queens that didn't make a lot of propolis. Because propolis, when you have a lot of it in a colony, it's a little bit hard to work with, right? She's under that colony. Where's the queen? She's no. Under, then we did, not, we did not harvest honey. Where is she? Well, good question. Because she, pr she tried to get under. She oh, she probably crawled back in the colony. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't see her here. But. Okay, I just don't want to roll her. Right. <laughs> what, a, what a shame that would be, right? To kill a queen like that? Oh, my God. To kill any queen, it's a bad. You see around there? You better find her, Paul. That's your job. <laughs> Somebody better find that bee. Oh, more sealed brood. Oh, wow. All right, here's some open brood on this side. All right, so we can... Oh, yeah, there's a lot of open brood on this range. This is our frame we're going to sample. But we're going to make sure we see that queen. Well, she might be, she might also be open brood. She, she may have come, went through. All of these are open brood. All of that's open brood. And, and there's all a young brood over here. All right, it's all over here. That's all young brood. So... All right, so why are we looking for nurse bees? All right, so Varroa are attracted to nurse bee because they Here have... Here she is. Here she is. Okay, so... Alert, alert. <laughs> Good, just hold on. To All you got to do is hold that for 20 minutes. Yeah, that <laughs> oh, hi, What's honey? young brood look like? Yeah, so, they, well, I don't, know, I don't know if you can see it through, through your veil, but it's all in these cells. It's all, this is all, let me see. There's just no egg? Well, no, the eggs, eggs become larvae. I understand, but you're yeah. looking for... Well, I'm, you can't see larvae unless you... The way to see it is put the sun behind you, right at the right angle, like that, and then look in the bottom of the cells. All right? You can do it that way. So we're going to use this frame. Where is she? Where is she? Right here, right there. 
right there. All right, see they have little handles. You just pick them up by the handles. Let's put her over here where she is like safe. All right, now you can put that back down. She can't fly. She can't fly. She can't fly. She can't. She can. She can flutter. And we don't even use that term anymore, Paul. If you don't want to, you just want to know. We don't call queens fat. I know it's body image. All right, says Peter. I'm working with these. I'm working with these chrome magnets. All right, so. Um, so I'm going to shake them in here. They're going to fly. So, uh, you know, if you want to get all, like, get suited up, up, go ahead. Yeah. I, do I have my, I think my cup's in my back pocket somehow. Okay. Got a hive tool. Now there's um, really interesting theories out there about this part of the protocol. And so we're going to shake sure. these in here, right? So I'm just going to go like this. And Paul's going to put them back in. You can do that. I don't like to do that, though. Well, because I want to get the foragers out. I want nurse bees. So bees that are ready to fly will fly right out of this thing. Right? Nurse bees will take a little bit longer to fly, but they can fly. And they will fly. And eventually, every bee in this bucket will fly out. Right? But we're going to just... So we have our sample. It's always good. Oh, you want to take that top off? Yes, I'm ready. All right, so we're going to take and scoop. We don't have the queen in here. Right. Um, no, no, you don't. Well, well, could there be a two queen colony? Could be. Could be. Could be. So you know why we don't find two queen colonies a lot? Guess why? Because we stop looking once we find the first queen. All right, that's why we don't get them. All right, so now, okay, let's do that again. Look at the half cup scoop. Bring the bees down to here. A lot of these bees are flying away, right? Scoop them out. Now you should really level it if you like that, you know. So you got to, and then you just dump them in. Now you cover that baby up. That screws on. Now, now these bees, they want to go back in the colony, so you let them in. Now, you see how easy that was? I mean, it's not really a complicated protocol, right? What are you doing, Paul? I'm just organizing your life. Thank you. Paul's the best. All right, so what are you doing there? Shaking right, it up, so making a milkshake. Come on, get out of here. What are you doing up here? All right, so lots of bees in the air, maybe a couple thousand. <laughs> and so with 70% 70, 70 alcohol. That's 20 seconds. That was 20 seconds, so you want to go the rest of the way. So um, this is a spiral thing you do, right? Yeah. You can also shake them a little bit if you want. You can do anything you want, but you got to shake them for like about a minute. If you're using 90% alcohol, you don't have to do anything, actually. Okay, let's get that first frame back in and close this colony up. Every inspection, every inspection that you do, no, okay, that's critical. You have to have a goal. Who asked that? And once you meet, once you meet that goal, you close the colony. Hold on a second. I'm gonna, so the final step is always the same. You push all of those shoulders together to one side if you can, push them as much as you can, and then push them back in this direction so you center the space. You'll keep a equal space on both sides and the shoulders together and you'll have a much easier time inspect it next time we go down. You might want to shake those bees off of there. All right? Then you want to put your super back on too because we're, we're collecting a lot of bees. You're still shaking? What was that? <laughs> Is that like technical? That's technical. All right, pass this cup around, count the mites in that. Peter, yeah. put that on your chart. Yeah. They roped off to the bottom, right? We are in September. All right, now, you're going to twist, put it down at an angle, just twist to get the bees off. Oh, You put them on an angle. Talk nicely. Okay. You put them on an angle like this, and then you slide. Oh, this, this, this. Then you slide them off, and then if there's bees that are in the way, they'll get either decapitated or they'll move out of the way. In this case, I think we only killed one bee. This side looks more like how I do it. Yeah, well, it will. It will happen that way. So what you always want to do is get these dead bees out of here right away, right? Because you never know who's coming to your apiary and you don't want them seeing you doing that.
<laughs> all, right, so. all right, let's put that back on. All right, what do we got here? Maybe you saw somebody saw a mite in there. Don't don't disrespect my colony. I don't think there I don't think there was one in there. Right. Piece of something. Where is it? Okay, so that was hard to do, right? So why don't we just put it in the mirror here and take a better look at it? I mean, it's it's you're pretty. For something, you better get a stronger mirror than that. Okay. <laughs> so here you go. So here's the nice way to do it. You put it right in here, and then you can see everything that's in that column. See that? Get yourself one of them little mirrors, and then you you want to rig up something a little bit better than I have here. I just got a piece of aluminum wire out of my electrical stop, and then that's a that you can if you can't see mites and you, you, now they're 30 times larger in your visual field than they were before. That's a 30 times mirror, right? right? So what's there? So look, like, I'll save you all the trouble. There's no mites in that colony in that drop. I think it's pretty incredible. We, so here's the, here was the deal with this. We put on two Formic Pro Pads, 813, all right? So that's, what's today's day? When we did that, May 13, we had four mites in it. But we just put the Formic Pro on there for, for, um, yeah, s and Gs. I was showing you guys how to put it. Remember we said in the middle, we said, oh, let's just put them on that column. So that's what we did. Now we don't have any. So we're going into, yeah. yes, Sylvia. So you, so if you have multiple hives, do you really, you might test every single one of them? Well, or so. Is it just, is it indicative of all right. the overall APR and you just Yeah. Made so here's what, here's what that question was asked earlier. Sorry. So, no, 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 it's not the same question. So let's get, um, get uh, let me get my, give me my theory on it. Now, I'm, in no way do I suggest, am I suggesting that you do this. But you, you can actually dispense with the whole wash piece before you treat, right? So you can do what we did here. You can say, all right, it's August 13th. I took my honey off. Well, with, at this point, with formic acid, it doesn't matter. You can put it on with your honey on there. And I'm going to put a couple pads on there, and I'm, I'm going to treat them, or one pad. And then I didn't do a mite count. Then wait for the 10 days if you're going to do a single count. And then you do your drop. So, or you put a drop board under now, we saw very little mite activity in that colony, right? So that's another low, so we have a low mite yard, basically, is what we have here. And um, <clears throat> so that would be prophylactic then, right? And it's not, it's, you know, we've been, we've been, they pounded into us this sugar roll and washes, and they made, tried to make little uh, scientists out of every one of us. And I think it's pretty intimidating for some people to do all of this, you know, to get and, to, and then even to select. There's so many variables in that process. How do you make sure you select the right bees? You know, and like if we did this wash again, would we get a mite? Maybe, you know, but we're so low on the count, right? We wouldn't, you know, we probably would get zero or one again if we did it again. Now, the problem with all of this washing stuff is if you get to Nine mites, you got a tree, right? So we're, that's 3%. But the state inspector says, we should go down to 2%. Now, that's six mites. Okay, so now you got a 300 bee sample, and you're only looking for six mites in that sample. So the question is, at that point, have you basically gone beyond the capabilities of your testing methodology? Right, because the, statistically, the folks that have done the math on this are saying it's really likely that you're going to miss that one mite. Let's say you get mites drop. Now, was there really six in the sample? If you did another 300 B sample, would you get six? Or would you get four? Would you get five? So it's always a matter of a judgment and, and this sort of like interesting calculation you have to make in your head. If you're doing, then they say, well, if you're doing a sugar roll, because you don't want to kill the bees, which I don't, uh, which I don't do. I always do alcohol washes. Then you should uh, add a few mites because it's not as effective as releasing the mites. And then they said, well, if you, if you, um, okay, you could stay. Um, they said, well, if you, if you do a sugar drop, um, roll, then you just shake them up and the bees heat that sugar up and then the mites can't take the heat and all that and they drop off. Well, that's not true. 
there's nothing true about that. And so we had an experiment that uh, one of our beekeepers did, and he's an excellent scientist. And he uh, put a thermistor in the middle of that cup, and he had an infrared thermometer, and he, and he put the 300 bee sample in there. He shook them like crazy, and he never even raised one degree in temperature. So that's just, that's just dogma, right? So we say things in beekeeping that really don't mean much. You know, so, um, so what I'm suggesting is that you can take that approach. You only have one or two colonies. You might be a little bit anticipate, uh, you know, intim intimidated about this whole process, although I tried to make it as easy as possible. But after, like we did it here, we can say something about the efficacy of this treatment, right? We can pretty much say it really worked because we should have saw some mites. Right. Did you fully seem... treat it or half treat it though? I've, we fully treated this colony, yeah. But it would also seem that if the flow is winterized, or one more rent of winterizing, if uh, we're not completely confident with our tests, we would prophylactically treat, right? Because it would yeah. seem that science, like statistically it's challenging. You could be off by just a little bit. Well, I might. You, yeah, and you, would, you, would, you might have a mite problem through the winter that I yeah. that way too, right. given like the heat waves and the high temperature right. so days. I mean, like I'm the thinking window. of treating regardless in October. You haven't right, answered the like question. Solid. Why not just treat regardless? Like why aren't we? And with yeah. what? Why isn't that kind of the his instruction to all our risk of resistance okay. developing if you continue to treat cold Not with formic acid oh, or oxalic acid. Fine. I don't think there's any way that a, that an organism can resist uh, being burned by acid. We haven't evolved, right? <laughs> so you're going to get burned by acid. Uh, so. So why not do it? That's a personal decision, right? So, so you're asking why not just go ahead and why do pro just teaching us we're here for a lesson. Why aren't you teaching us to call some put them on? Well, it goes against all of the literature. Yeah. <laughs> all of the whole literature of all beekeeping says test when you get to this economic threshold, then treat and don't treat. That's a that's a um, that's a scientific method, but it's designed pretty much so that you don't add resistance to that. But it's not likely that formic acid bees will ever. Get, I mean, I, I can't say that for sure. I don't really know that. But uh, we've been using formic acid and oxalic acid for a very long time. Shows no. Now, if it was a if it was a, a synthetic, like say apivar, and you did that, now you actually are on. You're you're working in the molecular mechanism of the bee, and that they have already. Um, develop some resistance to apivar, and they will. I mean, so if you give an organism a chance to biologically work their cell machinery, they will actually get eventually resistance. But you're not right. worried about resistance to formic acid. I'm, I'm not worried about resistance to formic acid and oxalic acid. You see how nice it worked? Mm -hmm. So I'm not worried about it. doing an OA vape in late October, November? Yes. So an so in my so an oxalic acid dribble or or vaporization. If you're not familiar with vaporization, I suggest you try to do a dribble. Because uh, vaporization is is a little bit uh, trickier from a safety standpoint. Yep, true. Right, so you can't really get exposed to those vapors. So if you're going to use oxalic acid when your colony's broodless, do that in um, in a 50 degree day in November. And it's easy to mix up the oxalic acid and the, and the uh, glycerin. Did I say glycerin? Yeah, glycerin. I didn't. I didn't mean that. I did not mean that. I got the crystals and just the little wand. I did I got a bee package. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Before they started making honey. Well, no, that won't work. That won't work. Uh, so the colony has to be totally broodless for oxalic acid to work. So that's why people are saying, should I do that in October or November? Because at that point the colony will be totally broodless, and then yes, then you oh, can no, use an oxalic acid. Cap brood. You mean no, they won't have cap brood. They won't have anything. No, when, November, November, the winter bees have already hatched. Right? Yes. Oh, they're all just clustering. So it's likely that, and and what your your job at that point, if you're going to do it that way, is to make certain that before you do that treatment, your colony is broodless, right? So and that you can depend on um, the winter solstice for it. That's the way I think about it. So by the winter solstice, right after the winter solstice, the queen starts laying again. So, um, so that's early in the year. So sometime in December, right, you can do it. But you want to pick a 50 degree day in, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do any kind of acid, you want to pick a warmer day in December to do it because then the cluster's not so tight. 
right? And if you're and if it's insulated, it won't be so tight anyway, right? So um, then you can do it, right? But you won't be effective unless there's no brood in the colony. So remember that, oxalic acid, no brood. Formic acid works with brood. And the dribble and the vaporization are equally effective. Ah, uh, yes. Um, the only difference between the two is that you can vaporize the heck out of a colony. It doesn't do any harm to it. You can't really, when you're dribbling, you're feeding the bees, right? The formula is to put oxalic acid with sugar. That sugar is something the bees want, not, not glycerin. <laughs> and, then, and then the bees will eat it. They don't eat glycerin. You got it. <laughs> Trick question. You just literally dribble it into the plant. Well, you got to follow the instructions. There's plenty of instructions out there. There's a, you got to mix up the right amount, and you have to measure it all at a little high, yeah. hypodermic Watch needle. Somebody help me with the vaporization. Okay, so they can do that. They can help you with the vaporization. Make sure you've done it right. But I want to get back to the to the uh, test piece of it because we're still answering that question about whether or not it's smart to do prophylactic um, treatment and then follow up with a drop. Right, think about the variables in that test. Seems simple, right? Oh, we picked, I'm standing here saying we picked the right bees. Did we? Who knows, right? Who knows if we actually picked the right one? So when you're all doing this, right? Like I have a lot of experience with this, but how about, are you confident that you're gonna get the exact right cohort of bees in there? Look really, I mean, so, and then there's, um, you got five mites. Like, what do you do then? You gotta make a decision about whether or not I actually treat at 2% or I wanna treat at 3%. We are in September, right? This is the time of year when you, we can get 30 or 40 mites in a drop, right? And we got one, a none, zero, right? So that's another thing, you know, so did we do our test right? It's almost like we should do it again because we, we didn't get any mites. All right, so. No. I mean, they might kill. Uh, it's, you can use powdered sugar for an um, accelerated drop. So in other words, you could take powdered sugar and, and sprinkle it through the brood nest. And then if you had a drop board underneath it, you can see how many mites. Usually what you do is just spray that powdered sugar, right, and look for mites. Or I don't know how you do it. Is that, how you, is that what you do? Oh, you don't, you're just treating with powdered sugar. Yeah, so I don't think that that's worth your time. I know that there's a small, it will give you a small kill because uh, the, it will, the theory behind powdered sugar, I'm not sure if this is ever tested, but the theory behind um, powdered sugar is that it makes the bees, um, it's like putting down, uh, it's like putting down um, something under your pizza, you know, like it makes it roll nice and smooth, makes it slippery, flour or something like that. But I was thinking of another uh, cornmeal. cornmeal under your pizza. Of course, there's pizza people here. I thought it was cool. that they were grooming each other. Yeah, that, that could be too. That might be happening. But it's all just hearsay. And the, the numbers are not, don't support it as a good, solid Vero treatment. All right, so it's not that you're wasting your time. You're having fun. And you're also filling the cells up with sugar, right? The open brood cells up with sugar. So there's lots of stuff that might be kind of not okay to do. But um, if you want to continue to do that, fine. I, I use my fork on the brood to test for the mite, and I found mites. Brood, brood, which one? Well, the, what kind of brood? Closed. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, closed cells. Closed cells. Yeah. And I used the knife, the fork. Yeah. Peeled some off, and I found mites. Yes. So I got the formic acid. The formic. All right, that's not a test, though. Let's get straight. Oh. All right, that is not the test, but you know that your colony had varroa at that point. Yeah. All right, so you know it had varroa. You could have just assumed that ahead of time. <laughs> so don't go, so you're in there with the fork and you're going after worker brood or drone brood. So it's, we, we usually do that with drone brood. I think it's a total waste of time, but, and you're killing brood that you don't have to kill. You know, you can kill I the did bees. It a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and then just put, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so don't, just, I just want to be clear that yep. that's not okay. a diagnostic. Yep that you can depend on, right? You can depend a little bit more on this one. Yeah. Yes? The instructions for formic prophate not bleach during the treatment. So I'm not, but I was because of the dirt, and, you know, and I'm kind of concerned because I'm doing this once a week. Should you not really be feeding them? 
according to them, you shouldn't be feeding him. Okay. Now, and the, reason is? and the reason is that it wasn't tested with feed on. So they're not saying it doesn't work or it's going to harm them. They're just, they don't know. They didn't test it. Okay. So there's no scientific Because I did that, but I, was, I, I um, took my bird bath and I put a pie pan in my bird bath and filled it with sugar water and figured they're bringing it from outside and bringing it in rather than going up to the top and I'm not sure if that was any different. Cool. I love that. <laughs> Your bees won't do anything like that. Because they don't follow what you think they'll do. <laughs> they do what they do. But they've eaten. They, they're there. There's thousands of them there. They're just. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. No, there's no doubt that they're eating it, but where they're putting it is another story. Oh, they might just be consuming it to stay alive. That's, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, that would be fine. <laughs> that's like feeding bees. But you were saying you were feeding them outside the colony because you had formic yeah. on, on the inside? Yeah. Well, yeah, see that? You didn't violate any label. Okay, so that's then it's there. That's because it's. I, I, I saw something or read something that said that. If you're feeding from the top, they might only be concentrating on going there and not walking around and getting the treatment. I, I, I yeah, the formic acid works a different way. It, formic acid is a fumigant. Oh, okay, then cool. Yeah, so the, the, you smelled it, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's outgassing well, we and it goes down. So we can feed them anyway? I said mine. <laughs> the bee police are not going to come and knock on my door? They might. I don't know. You have a really tough... Can you, it's a, so, so, <laughs> so what the instructions say, don't, you know, don't feed during formic acid. That's all I can tell you. Okay. You know, I mean, you know what you want to do? See, bees aren't that, I, mean, I talked about it earlier, that bees aren't such a mystery. You always have to, you can take that part on yourself, right? You can say, well, you can say, yeah, you might kill them all, but you'll learn something. And, and so with, I fed the bees during my formic pro. Did I do anything? Did it work? Is my mic count down? Are the bees all right? They have food. There's not a whole lot of honey stored. Right, because you took it. No, I didn't actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, for this hive, you've only got one brood box. Is the intent that you would um, combine to make it? No, I'm just going to take that queen excluder out. get through the winter? Oh, yeah. There's about 45 or 50 pounds of honey on that. Right, you're going to take the super off. Yeah, and then... No, 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 I'm not going to take the super off. I'm going to take the queen excluder off and leave them all at that honey. So I'm not... The only reason that we have this queen excluder on was to keep all the brood down in the bottom. Yeah, we were... We were trying to illustrate what... Now, you can make a lot of honey in this configuration in the early part of the year. So you do the same thing. You take your single brood box, put a queen excluder on, put two or three drawn comb mediums the super. They'll fill them right up. Uh, you can, you can, yeah, you don't have to harvest honey. Yeah, you can just leave the honey. I didn't know what to do with them. Uh, I don't, well, for, for a single brood box, then in the spring, you would do the same thing. You configure it in that way. Because what's going to happen is, if, when you take this queen excluder off, the bees are going to start to move up with the queen. So in the spring, when you open it, the brood will be in this box. Right. You can do whatever you want at that point. If you get a colony like this to overwinter, which I hope this one does, it's going to be a massive colony coming into the spring, and it will need to be split. We probably can make five colonies out of this. In a, in oh, wow. it, and, and what do we do if we don't have the room to split our colony? You don't do it. You don't split <laughs> I, it. I, I, I bought it in the spring because I had to you split mine. You like, don't, don't, don't split it if you don't have the room. <laughs> no, if they don't have the room, the bees are just going to swarm. Not a, you, yeah, you can let them swarm if you want. I, 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 I think that there's a lot of people who disagree with me about that, but... Hey, especially your neighbors will disagree with me. I don't have <laughs> options. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So, the story is that I, I had to. struggled with maintaining yeah, yeah. hives that were manageable, mm. which made it struggle through swarming, requeening, trying to get new queens, and then no honey yeah. <laughs> for, to harvest, right? Like, they're alive, <laughs> and they're doing Yeah, you won't get any honey if your colony swarms. What? You won't probably, you're not likely to get much honey if... You can't harvest when they start swarming. Yeah, they won't make a lot. Yeah. Because they've split, they've reproduced, and it takes a long time, so they don't make a lot. It's catch-22, because if you want to harvest something as a backyard beekeeper, but you don't want to manage too many hives, it's a hard juggle, and... You got to figure that out. That's a personal decision. Everybody has to figure that out. It's hard. I understand it. Yeah. So what I already offered you this, and I'm going to offer you again. So every colony that you don't want... <laughs> I'll take it. And we'll put it in the yard. See all of that room over there? Got plenty of stuff to put in the yard. So do you need to... Can 
I write it off as donation. Yeah, right, right, any yeah. money at all. Yeah, they're not gonna. They they're likely not gonna make much. We're in a flow now. Just start feeding or wait until the flow. Is oh no, yeah, no. If you if you're not seeing nectar coming in right now, you gotta well, start do. feeding. I do, but there's no honey. Like there's no capped honey. Well, in, in the supers. So, do I just? Well, are they filled with balls? nectar? Yeah, but if it's not like amazing, it's just small amounts. It's just a gerb. It's not amazing. <laughs> no, it just, I love that. It's not amazing. Well, I know. I, it just doesn't seem like there's enough. Food I know. To harvest, so you should just leave it for the bees. Where, and where I would leave it for the bees. So, um, start feeding. well, so if you don't want that, if you don't want anything out of those supers, then you can start to feed. But they're not going to really put in much honey at this time of year, right? Oh no, no. I'm sorry to say, in the next four weeks or so, they could put in a couple supers of honey if this goldenrod flow holds out. Okay. And the knotweed. They'll make a super honey on that knot right there. Which one's so there's still hope. So huh? There's still hope. Yeah, there's still hope. But then I'm afraid if I harvest it, then I'm not leaving anything for the bees. You know? It's right. If you harvest it, you are not leaving anything for the bees. And then what do you have to do? Feed. Right. And, and pollen? And pollen patties? At that no. Point? No pollen patties. So I, I took my honey super off because they, they didn't even build it out. They were just putting honey in the brood supers. I have two brood super layers. Yep. Should I put it back on or no? no leave it. Put it in, put it, in, put it in your freezer, freeze it up so that there's no wax more in it, and then seal it in a plastic bag or something, and then and get it. You know, I that's. Didn't even build it out. Yeah, well, you didn't draw a comb, so that's a different thing altogether. There's lots of, that's a whole lesson. So. Question for my understanding. Right now, I have two um, honey supers on a hive, and I'm not taking it for myself. I'm leaving it for the bees. Can I feed as well if I need to? You don't need to. If you have two full supers, you don't need to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably are not. But no, you have to figure that out. Like, in other words, do they start eating back that honey? So and why not pollen patties now? Yeah, yeah, forget about pollen patties in the state of Connecticut. We don't need them, usually. And anyway, we're not commercial beekeepers, so... Um, you can put them on, but, you know, if you have small hive beetles, that's their feed. And, you know, we have a pollen flow right till, look at over here. I mean, this is just, we, we disturbed the heck out of this colony, but still, you'll see them coming in. Or if we'll, we'll go look at another colony, and we have to start on the second part of this program. But we're going to see them coming in with pollen. Yeah. And those frames were plugged with pollen that I, they pulled out of here. So, you know, I don't see, ever see a need for pollen unless you live in an area where there's a pollen dearth. And if you're not living in an area where there's a pollen dearth, we in Connecticut have pollen right from maples in the early spring all the way through frost. Okay. So. Can I ask you a follow-up question okay. real quick? Yes. He had mentioned that uh, you put a honey super on. I got the same. I, my first year, I got packaged bees. I got two deeps, and they're filled in really good. I got lots of brood, and I have honey in those. Yep. Exactly. I put a honey super on though back like in early June and it's always got bees in it but they haven't filled out any of the comb at all. Exactly the same. Yeah, yeah because you didn't you didn't pick up on the signs that would allow them to build honey. So in other words there was a point during the evolution of those two deeps where they were telling you they needed more space. What was the sign? They were never full though when I put the super on. They were th well, they were built. They were building comb. Well, maybe I will. So you may not have had a flow, but it, if they did, they draw out all of those combs on the, in the deeps. Pretty much. That's. I would say that's probably like. Well, last time I was in there. Is this your first year? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, no, it's first year, and uh, you know everything was empty. No, frames, buy so buy my honey. <laughs> all right, we're going over here. Wait, wait, we're gonna um, which one are we gonna do? The triple deep to? over there. What's yeah. your fuel that, that, source bill in that smoker? I didn't have one. Twine. Twine? Twine, yeah. And bailing twine. This is the, with the triple deep. Yeah, we got we got to manage that. We have to get that down to two. Okay. All right, we're going to insulate one of these colonies. All right, so I'm going to show you the way I do it. All right, so. But this be, before I get started, there are one, two, three, four, five, six of these. This one comes out easy. The rest of them, I don't know why, but they don't come out easy. But somebody wants one, you can separate it, you can have it. What are they? They're feeders. They're in frame feeders. They're singles, right? There's no cover on top? This is how they come. These were given to me as gifts. How do you use them? 
Well, that's what you got to figure out. Oh, you got it open? All right. Okay. Put pine needles in them. Fill them up with pine needles all the way up to the top. All right. So if you put pine needles in any feeder, a top. If you go to any any pine tree this time of year, go underneath it. You'll get a ton of pine needles, and then you just stuff all these pine needles all the way in till they're all like all in, and then you pour the syrup in. And then you just keep pushing the pine needles down as they, as they, as they rise, and you won't even get one drowned bee in there. Because, and what they'll do is they'll, they'll start to take the, the syrup from the, from the surface on top, and then when it dries out, right, they'll go down and they'll crawl between the pine needles. They'll tunnel through. When, you get, when they get done, these pine needles are like you pick them up off the road. So they clean them all up. So yeah, pine needles in here will keep your bees from drowning in any kind of a feeder that the syrup is exposed, like the top feeders that we have that we buy with the screen in the center and those two uh, reservoirs on each side. No, bees don't usually drown in those because they can't get at the syrup. Yeah, you got to take a frame out. Just yeah. one? I think that's a single. That's a single. Yeah. Do I put it in the front? You put it in the side. No, do I put it in the front of my do I put it in the front of my hive? You put it on the side. No, you put it away over on the side. Oh, okay, that, that way. Okay, I'm looking at going. Show me how you do this. So if you put it like right here. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, so it's just, but it doesn't matter. But it goes either in the front. It doesn't go in the middle. No, you don't know. You go. You don't want to break up the brood nest. Put it on the side. Right. And you like those better than the bucket feeders? No. Somebody gave me those. So now I'm giving them to you. Uh, I don't use them. I use top feeders. I've got the in high feeders with the two openings and the little ladder. Mm -hmm. I use those. You have to, That's what you have there. Yeah, but it has a No, it has a, a top and then it has two openings. Yeah, those are just missing. Oh, these are missing the top. Yeah, they, the person that gave them to me didn't give me all the equipment. That's why I'm saying just take this and fill it with pine needles. Okay. The same thing. Okay, here's my uh, my sleeve that made me world famous. <laughs> All right, so this is a um, sleeve. We're going to put this on that. Which colony are we going to put this on? That that one over there. We're going to we're going to winterize that one with my with the sleeve I make. And I want to just show you. Um, I'm going to show you the one I make, and then I'm going to show you some alternatives. So if you the way this go, that's an insulated telescoping cover. No, it's not a bottom board. That's the top. So you're going to have to use your imagination. Okay. Right? So if I want you to look inside that box, so it's a complete surround of insulation, right? There's no place in here that's not insulated. And there's no drafts or anything that'll get in through the top of it. So that's the key to having a colony that you want to overwinter in the condensing form, where you'll allow the bees to control all the moisture and everything in the colony. You can't have air streams coming in from all over the place. Right, so that's why this column, this particular configuration eliminates all air escaping from the top. That's Not all of it. suffocate if it's airtight like that. Yeah, no, the, no, no, bees, they still have an opening. Right, so they're bringing the fresh air in. Uh, they, don't add, they don't care about fresh air. Right, so they have one three-inch opening and they can ventilate the colony through that. That's it, huh? Yeah, it's the same thing. There's no opening now. We're, we're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how we put this on the colony. All right, so it's... It's upside, it's upside down. That's why, that's why he said you had to use your imagination. No air gap. All right, let's go over and put it on a colony. So this. Yeah, it's commercial. No, no, I made these. So you can use just a quarter inch styrofoam. No, you can't use quarter inch. That's not enough insulation. Let's go over here and put it in. All right, smoke that baby. Where'd he go? Oh, she disappeared. She's going for fuel. She's not. You put a she's spacer in uh, the TV screen, Bill? Go get it. Go get it. It's over there. Okay, we're going to have to remove this. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to, going to go through the whole thing. I'm going to tell you all about it. So you got to remove that. Well, we just had this off, but this is the propolis colony, right? Yeah. Oh, we just had it off, too. Yeah, how about that? 
We're going to leave this over here and let the bees walk back in. I'll get them to fly. All right, so the way this is designed, it's to, it's to, this design is to facilitate a condition that the colonies were, were initially um, subject to. So, so this is like a tree colony, right? And at this point, we're going to treat this as if this colony was actually going to overwinter in a tree. In a tree, they would have tons of insulation on the top, tons of insulation on the bottom, very, very insulated. And then around the side of that colony in the tree, it'd maybe be R5 or 6 or 7, all wood and a little tiny opening for the bees to control all the gases in the colony. Bees don't need us to ventilate in the winter. Absolutely no way we need that. And um, so this is my answer to that. Oh, I don't have, uh, this one doesn't have the little stays. Okay. So, contrary, contrary to what? Contrary to what popular belief. You've got the whole entrance open during the year. You want to bring it down to like three inches for the winter? Yeah, I, I run three inch, uh, three inch opening all year round, so I don't have to make that manipulation. But yeah, okay. you could do it that way. All right, so the, this is designed so it slips over the box. I should have tested this. All right. Now it sits on these little shelves I put on the, that are in line with the bottom of the colony. See, it's sitting on that little shelf. See that little thing I put there? Yeah, right. That keeps it up. All right now you've got, if you, were, if you were coming in here to look, you'd see that there's about an inch and a half or two inches of space between the top of this surface and the frames. All right? That allows you to do this. Okay? You can put this in here, this little screen. Now, this is a regular shim, but I put the screen in upside down because if you don't do this, the bees live on this inner cover in the wintertime. See what they did? So they start to chew the little, yeah, they chew that plastic. So they love this so much that they want, they cluster here all winter. And it defies everything you read about overwintering bees, where they have to have this cluster down here and then they work their way up. So in this colony, they'll all go up there and stay there, right? So in order for you to, what, what occurred to me like five or six years ago, when I first started to do this, is if I left them, I would leave them all clustered up here and they try to pick this up in the wintertime and you got 20,000 bees on it, right? And then you hit it and they all fall in the snow or something, right? So. So this keeps them, that from happening, right? They can't get past this eighth inch hardware cloth screen, right? This little thing stays right in there. And where did you get that? Hardware. Is, is that like a, just a, a... This is an emery shim that I put a little eighth inch hardware cloth. You can buy the hardware cloth in, the, in your look. Oh, okay. So you made I made it, yeah. I made it. I made this little... No, I didn't make this. I, I, I think I probably made the whole thing, but you don't have to. This is um, something you can buy and then... Hardware cloth you can put on. What if you have a top feeder on there? Do you take that off for the winter or do you leave that on for the winter? No, I don't leave my top feeders on all winter, no. no. I take them off. Underneath that, right, though, with so that's why this is designed this way. All right, so you got this lip here and you got all of this space here to put, put a sugar cake or something else on that you want to, if you have to use emergency feed. But it makes, inst it makes uh, winter inspection really easy because you can just take your, your telescoping cover off and all the bees are right there for you to look at and none of them are flying around so that's the nice part and then it's very simple after that this is just a regular this is a telescoping cover that I modified so it fits over this one inch sleeve now none of this you don't have to do any of this so I'm giving you the hard part first and I'm going to show you the easy stuff right that you can buy off the shelf to do right so you don't have to go through all of this um, See it? That insulator foam. See that? Yeah, it's going to be... Well, they don't have any access fragile. to that foam. Okay. Because, oh, because of the wood frame, right? They right. cannot get to that foam. Okay. Right. So they won't, they can't get inside here and get trapped inside the sleeve. Okay. Right. And uh, so that, so now you have, um, you have like R7 here and an R7 on top and it seems to be plenty. This slips over the top and that's it. You know, yeah, the bottom's an open screen. I slide that tray in there. That's all I do for the winter. Right. So that's my version. And the reason I have this version even is because I did this long before there was any products available that you could buy. 
right? So you don't have to go through all of this, right? You don't have to. I just want to show you the principle here. So it's a continuous wrap of insulation, right? All the way down from here and all the way around the top, and they touch, right? So you saw that when I had it upside down? No, that's not electrical tape. That's a, yeah, that's a foil tape. Yep, you can buy that. So see, there's, there's, no, there's no break in the insulation. See, it comes up and around. So that's, and there's no top ventilation, and there's no way for cold air to be driven up through your bees all winter long. So the old school way of keeping bees overwintered. Now, some of you have tried this, right? Is there anybody that's tried this? Yeah. I just want to say, making that box is not that easy. That's, what I'm, that's why I'm going to phase two with you. Because making that box is easy for me, but not for you. Right, so, so that's all I'm saying. Uh, yes. All right, so what happens is, so this stays totally free of condensation. And then the condensation occurs on the outside. And on the inside combs. So it's harmless because it never goes, drips back down onto the brood. All right, so as long as you have a surface that's above the dew point here, right, no liquid moisture will condense. And that's the beauty of this, right? So there's no liquid moisture that condenses here. And that was the problem that beekeepers were faced with when they decided they would ventilate their colonies. They saw that in the wintertime that just this wood surface here collected a lot of water, moisture, and it dripped down back on the, on the so they'd want to eliminate it. So how do you eliminate this? So my skills as an engineer were about building envelope technology. So I thought to myself, well, why, would, why, would we, why are we doing this with the bees? Why don't we just insulate this as above the dew point and then nothing will condense over the colony? But the and then, so the second advantage of it is instead of taking all that moisture out of the colony, right, it's there for them to use, right? And you get the latent heat that comes off of the condensing liquid and you also get, they also have a source of water they can use the thin honey when they want to eat it and all that. Bees have been surviving for thousands of I use the foil wrap because it makes it weatherproof. So you lost me on the top, you got too scientific. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm criticized for that regularly. Huh? What, what about the top? Avoids the condensation? Well, no, no. So in other words, if you, if this... Yeah, no, so, so, okay, so with this on here yep. and the brood nest in this area here, the hot air comes, the, the, the hot moist air comes off the brood nest from their metabolism, right? That occurs no matter what, right? They're eating things. If this surface is cold, like a glass in the summertime out on the porch, mm -hmm. moisture will condense on it right at that point where it hits this top and it'll drip back down on the bees. That will kill bees in the wintertime. So old school, they saw that. So what did they say to do? Well, put a spacer under here and let all of that moisture out. Yeah, you can do that. But it's like you can also leave the, you know, if you left the windows open in your upstairs all winter long, your furnace might be strong enough, right, to still heat your house. But you're going to use a lot of fuel. So you're, in my opinion, unduly stressing the bees by trying to ventilate that moisture out. You can keep it and make it harmless by insulating the top where then this is warm and no, um, did you ever, uh, did any of you ever use a hair dryer to um, put, <laughs> clear the fog off of your mirror? Right, how many people have done that? How many people have used their hair dryer when you get out of the shower, it's all steamy, right? And use your hair dryer and it makes a nice open circle for you. Does it condense again on there? No, you know why it doesn't? Because you made it warmer than the dew point. So that's the same as this, right? So you've made it warmer than that. All right, so, so that's the principle. Can you show us the inside of the outer but that would, that would suggest what you're It's just plywood. Up on top is also warm. Is that what you're saying? Yes. yes. So by the fact that you're allowing enough, you've, you've got the top with the, the foil as well, it's staying warm enough that you're not getting that kind of condensation. Right. Okay, that was the conclusion. I didn't get that. All right, no, I was like, good. All right. I thought I said it, but who knows. Um, so, and then I run this all year round. So once I invested in making all of these telescoping covers, I said, why should I take them off? 
because principle the, the principle of insulation is the same in summer or winter you know so you know it doesn't matter in the summertime it keeps the heat off the concrete it I made it reflective for for another reason which if I go into that now <laughs> the criticism will rain I mean they'll get me on Twitter and Facebook yeah. don't Yeah, so the screen and that shim stay in there all winter. No, 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 I don't know. No, well, you saw what it was like, right? The screen wasn't there before. No, the screen was not there before. I just put that on. I made that sleeve so it was a little bit longer than I needed so I could put that screen inside. Now, uh, that's a feeding shim, actually, for the winter time. Um, so, <clears throat> what did I want to say? No, when do you put it on? Well, I won't put this on until probably the end of next month. Yeah, it doesn't really matter much. Because remember, you, only, you lose about 25% of your heat out of the side, 75% on the top, and I'm running insulated tops all year. There was one there, right? There was one here. And all the rest of them are all insulated tops. The only one that doesn't have insulation is the top bar, but I'll change that before the end of the winter. All right, so I run insulation all year on the top. All right, so... No, 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 that, that front entrance is, 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 awful, is off about three-eighths of an inch, and you watch the bees will go right in there. See it? Okay, so that stays that way during the winter. Time. Yes. You put a mouse guard or something on there, right? Uh, I put a mouse guard on the, on the entrance reducer inside. I use a piece of half-inch hardware cloth, bend it at a 90-degree angle, and just put a couple of thumbtacks in it, and that's the end of that. When do you worry about the mice coming in? Like, uh, you should worry about the mice coming in in about a month. But if you got... Do you... So... <laughs> Do you think a mouse could get into that colony over there? <laughs> now you can smell the goldenrod, right? Yep. All right. That's my version. Let me show you the simple stuff. Same principle, simple. Bill, I see there aren't any robbing screens. Yeah, I'm not having any robbing. Oh, lucky you. I know. Yeah. No, it's already insulated. All right, that's already insulated for you, so you'd be fine, yeah. All right, so let's say you want to insulate the colony, but you don't want to go through all of that trouble of making one of those strange telescoping covers. This is a, um, a, a product that you can buy from the supply houses, and um, you, can, you can buy it. It's called a B-Max top cover, right? It's already okay to use for that size. If we walked over there and we took off my complicated telescoping cover and put this one on, huh. it would work, right? Same principle. It wouldn't have the, you know, it wouldn't, have, uh, it wouldn't condense on, on the area right over top of the column. All right, so this is available if you just want to insulate this outside and you just wanted to put on one of these, you can, uh, you can buy it, right? And, or you can use that Be Smart product over there, which has, so Be Smart sells this thing for lots of money, right? And what it is, is the, is the combination of how you can use this on top, right? So that's an insulated inner cover, a little feeding hole in it. So if you wanted to feed your bees, you would pop this black thing off and you can put a feeding uh, feeder in the center of that if you wanted to feed your bees in the winter. And then what you would have to do, right, is you would have to put another box over the top and cover your feeder, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, so this is a pretty um, complete set. The first cover you showed already built in the next row half inch insulation around the, around the hive? No. So the, this, the insulation around the hive, that's something that you would have to do anyway. All right, so you got to find some way, and I, I suggest you wouldn't buy one of those flimsy wraps. You'd probably do something that has a little bit more substantial R value. But I'm not really that concerned about the outside of the box. The only reason I made those is to keep it airtight. I was doing an experiment with them. That's so, so then I, I became sort of like this proponent of condensing colonies. I named them that because that's what they do inside there, right? And then I wrote articles on it for American Bee Journal. You can follow them and also for bee culture. And you can get all the specifics about the, for the folks that got lost on that um, presentation, I can really confuse the hell out of you if you read my articles. So, Bill, is there, what's the material? So those, those two types of covers, are they the same 
cover. Is there something insulating in them that would make it different? You would get a different Wait. result if you just use No, this is about R7. This is the same. This is EPS. Mine's polyisocyanurate. So it's like some insulating material. Yeah. So it's, there is something besides of me just using my inner and outer cover and just sticking yeah. mine. Yeah, no, no, that's, I thought, so what I'm saying is that this is available so you don't have to make that right. telescoping. But I'm just saying, like, why can't I just, I don't know, in the box stick a piece of styrofoam and then use my typical wood inner cover and outer cover? I mean, am I getting a lot more? You're getting, well, well so, so the principle is, it's a different principle, right? So I'm suggesting that that's a way you can make your colony simulate what they're, what they're, Got it. so in, in a tree, right? Okay. By making that whole inside seal. Okay. You can do any way you want to do that, you can do it. Um, Got to remember that if you do insulate your top, you don't want to have a lot of air space flowing, through, a lot of air flowing through it. Notice that the way that that top fit with the sleeve around it, you're not going to get a lot of air movement that the bees don't want, right? So, you know, the first thing bees, beekeepers will tell you is, well, you know, especially um, ones that have been around a while, will say, well, you know what? The bees build up a lot of uh, CO2 in that colony, and, they, uh, and that, that won't be any good for them. So and if you ask them why, they don't know why, right? And the, ex the answer actually is, and there's been tons of research on this, and recently there's been a lot more, that what happens is when bees build up a big envelope of CO2, which displaces the oxygen in there, they actually uh, revert to what is called an ultra-low metabolic rate. So they've, our evolution has already provided them with a mechanism to account for the CO2 that builds up inside of a tree. Right? So they don't sleep so much as they just, they just, they just go down to it. You know, the CO2 doesn't have the same effect on insects as it has on us, right? I mean, you can die. Right, right. It's a, right. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. So, so the answer is that if uh, if if bees are exposed to a high CO2 environment, they they change their metabolic rate, and then it conserve they conserve fuel that way, right? So there's lots of things going on, and then if you were to say, well, I know more better than the bees. Let me just throw a lot of in, a lot of ventilation in this box for the winter time, right? How do you know how much to put in? The bees will ventilate that colony in these incredibly small increments. A couple of bees will start to fan, and then they'll stop. And then maybe more will fan later on, or maybe they won't fan at all. So if you think you can regulate that process better than um, the, the, the bees can do it themselves based on their heredity and environment and, uh, and, and biology, then go ahead and try. But in my case, it's like, my first thought about adding ventilation to a winter colony is that you've just like decided to just hit them with a sledgehammer. Get as much of that stuff out as possible. And that there are some scientists now that are very important in this field and they're talking about um, on the fact that you put your bees in a survival mode when you're doing that. And yeah, if they've got enough heat in there, I mean if they've got enough resources in there, they might be able to survive that kind of cold, subjected to that cold all year. But I, my, my thoughts are why stress them, right? What do you mean? So much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I want to show you something that somebody is designing for us that, that does the whole deal. Now, this is a, a space age product. This is a vacuum insulated panel. I don't, I, there's another name for it. But this little panel right here, see this thinness on the thing? R28. That's, that might not mean much to you, but this is our probably five, and those are our seven. This is R28, three times of the R value. It's like beekeeping in Maine. Is that good? Yeah. No, that's good. And can you see that besides a regular inner cover? Yeah, that's outer like cover. Kind of What's that? Could you put that right under a regular outer cover? A sandwich in yeah. between? Yeah, yeah, so if you're just looking for insulation, yeah, exactly. go buy that. Where do you buy How much is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do All right, and then, she, and then she's, she's, got, she's got me involved in a test for these. And, you, and I, I would challenge you to put this thing together. All right, so these four panels, they fit into these little keys, right? And if somebody wants to stay after class, you can get this together and you can slide it over a colony. So these products are coming on the market, right? So you'll be able to buy things like this where they're automatically 
They're designed so that you can just slap them together and put them on your colony. Or you can make it yourself, either way. And they're right. marketing them without ventilation. Yes. Now this one came with this. So I ran this last year. This is a cell phone in here. A what? There's a cell phone in here. <laughs> it's still good. So you have to, I had to charge the battery to get this thing to work. Before. This is satellite driven, right? So it sent a signal to a satellite and the person that was doing this experiment that I was part of then had the data readout of everything that was going on in my colony from a temperature standpoint. And they were, they're in Minnesota. So okay, they need that arc from well, yeah, we could, we could use it there too. That goes together a little bit easier than it looks like. There it is four pieces, just get it. Goes on all four sides of the colony. Then this slips in in the middle, right? This R28 panel. Um, yes. The only thing you want to achieve on your colony for the winter time is to make sure that there's no moisture that occurs on a cold surface above the bees. And then the rest of that insulation, if you want to get as fancy as I did, trying to make these into condensing colonies, go ahead. You can buy those products to help you just put a little bit more insulation around your colony. I think if you help them just a little bit, you might get them, you might help them get through. I mean, they may have been really heavily predated with, um, with uh, Varroa during the year. And, you know, so they're weakened going in and maybe you can help them out a little bit. To so get if them I just through. have a regular telescoping out of cover, and I could slid something, because I saw someone... Recently. Then you won't be, I won't be any around the side. If you put the shim in with the screen and then you saw that right over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, then that could go under your outer cover. Yeah, you can do it any way you want. Yeah. You can configure it any way you want. So All right, so. Thing is then a quilt box is. A quilt box is, uh, um, yeah, that's a fun thing, quilt boxes. Not needed. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they're needed at all. I think they're just a total waste of time. Now, I've given a presentation on this in front of large audiences, so they're way, they were way tougher on me than you guys are. But you know, you get old timers, and they're, they'll tell you that you're killing your bees. And some folks have tried it here. No. Now, as long as the bees stay alive, you don't get any mold. You get mold inside. See, everybody. So there's another sort of like uh, interesting um, myth. Thank you. Uh, or you know, bee lore, I call it, where people have go into colony. It's dead. They see mold all over the place. And their assumption is that that caused the death. And that's, so when bees die, they're about 80% moisture, right? And they have no way of ventilating the colony after they're all dead. So what happens is you get a couple warm days in the spring and uh, mold starts to grow. It even starts to grow a little bit in the wintertime. And then all of a sudden you're seeing a lot of mold on your frames and you're saying, oh, these colonies needed more ventilation. The bees are dead, right? So they didn't have a chance to control the air in the colony. They couldn't ventilate it or circulate it. Right, so. Yeah, so. I feed with uh, mason jars. And yeah, yeah. And they like it. Yeah, the bees like honey no matter how, or, or oh, syrup no matter how you give it to them. Yeah. All right, just take a look at that. We're going to wrap up here. I'm uh, sorry, but we went so long. What yeah. You, when you make up your sugar waters, what do you add to it? Nothing. No, no and don't put anything in. No. Be healthy Please stop no. that. Because they're just giving you, you're just giving them their money. There's no, I do this, right? Ask them to give you the data on their the efficacy. Because I was reading one YouTube, I was watching one YouTube video YouTube. recently. YouTube. Okay. I know, that was my first mistake. They suggested um, be healthy, a Hive Alive and Amino Booster. So I was adding two supplements to my sugar water. And I'm like, that's just a lot of money to put into, you know, just one more thing to... We have no, we, cert, we currently do not know if, if we could control the microbiome of bees. So any kind of enzyme you're putting in them, we don't even know if that survives in a bee's gut. Right. So we have no science to support that piece of it. All of those other ones, uh, you know, they make your colony smell nice. Yeah. I mean, and that also, that smell always carry, also carries out, right? And uh, makes your colony uh, like a little... Uh, Target. target for other bees that want to rob it, so it's easy right. for them to spot it. So just two to, uh, two to one. Two to I would, you know, if you're going to feed them right now, I'd go maybe one and a half to one, okay. and then I would switch over to two. Thank you. All right, but I would not put that stuff in my colony. Huh. It smells smells wonderful. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I already had really so much of it. <laughs> Mix it with vodka. Uh -huh. <laughs> Again. All right, taking.
So earlier we saw this colony. We said, oh, there's no pollen coming in. Take a look now. Oh, yeah. Right, so. Hey, listen, um, I kept you longer than I should have probably. Uh, so I gave away that. All right, so we have to find an equitable way to give away this thing. Right? So how would we do that? It's up to you guys. Figure it out. How do we do this? So this top and inner cover is up for grabs. What's yours? The 18th. Do you want this thing? I would love it. Yeah. Here you go. Very good suggestion. Uh, yeah. Bring me 35. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I did so. Did leave a pair of gloves here last workshop. If anyone found a pair. Uh, All right. So you you have an insulated inner cover. Thank you. And you have that top you can use. I was actually going to buy a bunch of these. Well, there you go. Just, oh, give it, give it back. Give it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's a pretty much a uniform size. If I buy a, if, if I buy a insulated cover and I have a 10 frame. Well, that's what I was telling you about this, All right? So this is B-Max, right. that's a name brand, right. and this will fit over insulation you put on the side. But what if I don't have insulation? I have, like, I have, I have two from two hives. I've got a polystyrene one, which I think is B-Max, um, and my bees have lived through the winter, except for when I killed them. Um, but then I also... Yeah, they have a hard time surviving that. <laughs> But um, then they, they, I needed to split my hive this spring, so then I have just a wooden, because it was all of a sudden like, I have to go out right now and get another hive. So I wonder if I get a cover like that, will it fit over my wooden frames, or do I need... No, that's, that's what I was trying to say about this. You can buy this, and it's already wide enough, because it has to fit over the B-Max hive. So the B-Max hive an is an inch wider than a regular wooden box. Mm -hmm. So they make this so it fits over their oh, product. Okay, okay. So you already got that in oh, space. So what I'm saying is you can make a sleeve like that, mm -hmm. right, out of anything else, and this will still fit over it. But you don't want to make it out of one inch, you make it out of three quarter. Do you think if I've got, I need that outer, that outer sleeve, if I've got a solution framework, is that more important to the top? I, I like to run that configuration. Okay. This is bigger than our telescope. Company. It's one inch bigger in all dimensions. So, so yes, so it fits over. And it's hard to visualize that stuff. So, that one, the one in the box fits the standard Langstroth colony. And there's no room for insulation on the side if you use their top cover. All right? But you don't have to. For that piece, the concept of that, just this piece of insulation, is you could sit it on top of the wired yes. um, shims that you had. Or under it. Or on, wire on top of it. Yeah. On top of it, right? yeah, it would have to be and on then top. we put our covers on. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're letting too much air in on the sides. So if you, want to, if you want that print, if you just want insulation, make sure the insulation is as close to the bees as you can Around get. Around the bees. So and, and, go, and it has to, you want it to overlap the wood. So if you're only going to... No. And so that's why, you know, that's why. You can use a regular telescoping cover. You can just cut a big piece of foam, two-inch wide, pink foam, or whatever you want to buy. As long as it's the same outside dimensions of the box, and then put your telescopic cover on top of that. So, Bill, that's kind of what I did here. All right, so, he, uh, so we got one more thing before we go. This was a failure. Mind, <laughs> oh. mind you, I lost my bees this winter, but the debate was whether it was because of going in with too much of a load of Varroa versus was my design wrong. So, this fit on top, and then I'd have my regular cover on top of this, and I insulated with a two inch polystyrene around the outside. Okay. But that's pretty thick in there. It's like a hat. I like yeah, that. It's like a hat. <laughs> now, I didn't appreciate your condensing. Uh, so you put an upper entrance in. So I put a little vent in the top, which I think is actually. All stuff. right, so if you add cold air yeah. below your insulation, what have, you what have you done? That was a bad idea. <laughs> so I cold learned that today. So I can, I can plug yeah, I plug it up. Yeah, plug, plug that up. thing up. That is not but why your bees died. How many inches of insulation do you have? That, that looks really four thick between... How much? Four, two, that's a two. That's about eight. that much? Yeah, four inch, four inches of insulation. I like that. Make a hundred of them. Please. <laughs> we'll give them... This is a piece of uh, sheet metal. Got it. So they can't eat the foam. Yeah, because they will. Yeah. And then the other thing, if you're going to run them all year round like I do, 
the ants will get between the uh, foam and the box. And they'll make nests in there and they'll ruin your foam. So you got to do something to keep the ants out if you're going to make your own. No, there's nothing wrong with that design. Because you have, you have foam around the outside of the colony too. So how do those two insulation surfaces meet? They don't, do they? So I wrap the outside foam and I put a piece of Tyvek around that to try to cinch it down. And then this is on top. So I think that might Oh, you went over the, you went all the way up to the top of that surface? Yeah, and then- With the, the foam? And then the cover though- You're good. Was flush with the foam. So maybe that's another place where we kind of created a, a chimney effect. But that's not why your bees died. Okay, good. They died because they don't like you. <laughs> no, I they No, they <laughs> They just died. You know, yeah. bees died, you know. Hey Bill, um, if I have to use the bees mark cuz there's a lot of robbing. Should I be putting um a, a high redu I mean an entrance reducer behind it in the winter or Well, you can leave your entrance reducer on with that, with the with that with that be smart uh, robin screen. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, you mean oh, it's open? The whole f is open? Yeah, yeah, if you're going to run it, you don't have to run that robin screen all winter. So you take that off. <laughs> don't confuse foragers with robbers, please. I mean, robbing bees don't bring anything back good. And look over to that colony right over there, right? And you see all of those bees coming back with pollen? Those are not robber bees, right? So, and that, that colony over there, see it? The one, the big, same thing. There's more activity in the front of that, but that's not robbing activity. See it? Our robbing activity is real frenetic. It has a lot of energy, and the bees will be all over the colony, underneath, inside, trying to get, and trying to get in there and kill your bee. What? Yeah, it doesn't do a thing, except black wind. I'm not sure how much how that works. It, they're not cheap, but they overwinter. But now I'm like wondering if I use I did the candy board in the quilt box, and okay, they survived. But we all t you've told me enough beginner's luck, so I've got four this year. So now I'm trying to decide if I I do two the way I did last winter, and then two with the, this. You should always you know, I like that idea. Experiment. And then we'll see which ones make it. Sure. Well, but it might not be. There's about a hundred other variables involved in that. Yeah, so it's so. again, there's only four, so So you know no, I know, but they'd have to all be exactly equal strength, exact okay. varroa count, and exactly the same amount of stores. Well then you won't be able to tell you what what you've done if it worked or not. Right. So how can how quick did you say that when you made that sweep? How quick were those pieces? Though? Those were one inch, but don't use that. Three quarter. Because then all you got to do is buy that. Right? So you got three quarters of an inch of foam, and that'll fit right over it. And basically, you just, you just made a box and secured it with the. But you, you see, people said it was hard to do. Not electrical tape, but uh, that, that uh, HVAC tape. Yes. My cousin's an engineer. He can do it. All right, small hive beetles. All right, so take some of these home. This is a small hive beetle uh, killer. My bees are covered with foam. This is only a pad. You put it. No, this is a Swiffer pad. Oh, yeah. Oh, Swiffer pad. Unscented. And then you put this right in the corner, right there. You don't put it all the way in the colony. You just put it in the corner. All right? But you put it at the bottom of your brew box? Put it anywhere you want. So you put it like this. A little bit of it hangs outside the colony. Right? So you're putting it in there. And it, so this would be contact with the bees. Any way to keep them out to begin with? Mm, yeah, you got to keep your colonies real strong. Right on top of the frame, the Swiffer. On okay, top of the frame. In a corner. In the corner. And then the inner cover on top of that. So you need at least four. Are both of those are just like they get stuck the out? Or they the beetles are chased around by, by the colony, right? So they're trying to uh, chase beetles all over the place. The beetles will run. And they'll run up to those corners and they get caught in that swiffer. You can put as many as you want in there. But they're just swiffer. Take those. There's ten thousand in there. Huh? If anything, you can clean. If you got, if you got wax moth, that's right. If you have wax moth, uh, your county's way too weak. <laughs>